Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use fast API to build an API to serve machine learning or deep learning models. So we have, we have trained a lot of deep learning models in the past. If you are not aware of how we trained BERT for sentiment classification, I would totally recommend you to go back and take a look at that. But I will show you some of the code on how we train the model. But today we are just going to use the already trained model and we are going to use fast API to serve it. So what is fast API? Fast API is a framework which is much better than Flask. At least I find it much better than Flask. And I've been, I've replaced Flask with fast API. Um, it's, it's high performance is easy to learn fast to code and ready for production as it says here. So uh, yeah, it's, it's um, uh, qu quite good and uh, you will start loving it once you start using it. So here I am in this folder called fast API and here I have uh, main.py. So it's, it's the same model that we have trained in the past on IMDB dataset for sentiment classification and that's what we are going to use today. So we have the dataset class and yeah, I would like to mention that I'm using Thase, which is a very simple Python wrapper on uh, PyTorch. So you can use anything you want. So we have the bird data set and that returns us input IDs, attention mask, to token type IDs and targets. And then we have the model. So I'm using taze.model, I'm inheriting from there, but you can inherit from nn.module if you're using pure PyTorch. But then there's a few things that you would need to change. And I have the forward function. I have some, I'm tracking some metrics like accuracy. I have a uh, BC with logic loss and I have uh, Adam optimizer. I have get linear schedule with warm, pretty much default stuff. So it's a binary classification problem and I'm outputting only uh, one um, output and I will just take the sigmoid of it and I will threshold it. But for BC with logic loss, I don't need to uh, do anything. So it's just raw output. So this is also available in Taze. So if you go and see Taze examples, you will find it. Let me just open it for you. Um, not Taze, but Taze. Okay. So here it is. And um, here I'll go to examples, text classification and binary classification. So here you can find uh, all the code. It might be a little bit different, but the idea stays the same. So uh, now we have the model and we have trained it for some epochs, not a lot. And uh, we already have that in here, model.bin. So what we can start now is we can just copy paste some of the stuff from here and then remove some of the stuff. So let me take the model and data set and all the imports. And maybe I will create a new file called app.py or api.py, api.py. And I paste everything here. So now um, there are a few things that we will just remove. So our data set class stays like this. I know it has targets, but we can always supply fake targets for test data. In the model class, I uh, we will just remove the stuff we don't need. We don't need the training steps, scheduler, blah, blah, blah. We know that it's num classes is one. So it's always going to be one because it's test set. Uh, so we have that. We don't need the optimizer. We don't need the scheduler. We don't need loss. We don't need to monitor any metrics because we don't have any targets and we just need the forward function. And forward function should have the same, uh, if you're using Taze, then it should have the same arguments here as you have in here in this data sets, data set class. So I'm going to keep targets there. Uh, and then I can remove all this. And yeah, this is my code that I will use for uh, the API. So now if I go to fast API, they provide you with a starter code and it's very simple. So let's start from there. So let's start copy pasting some stuff. So I'll take these three lines and I uh, will put them here. So I got typing for uh, types, type suggestions, and I have this app. So it's just initializing fast API. I don't need 
pandas metrics or adam w okay so we got all this and now um what i'm going to do so it's it's like like you do in flask it's very similar uh, but much better so now what we are going to do is i'm just going to take this part and paste it here so in flask you do jsonify here you don't need to do that and uh you got this you can just do app dot get for a get request or app dot post for post request or something like that okay so now we have this slash endpoint and i can just say slash predict okay or maybe just let's just keep it like this and to run this we will use uvi corn so i'll go to fast api one and uvi corn and i run it on 0000, or you can use localhost and 12 port 12000 so let's see how it looks like uh let me open port 12000 here um okay it's not able to connect but that shouldn't happen oh yeah okay i have an error couldn't import a module app so the other way around api and then app so api is your file and app is the app okay so now we should be able to access it so yeah you see uh let's sh show you the raw data and you have hello world so it's working one one more good thing is you can just append slash docs to the url and it will give you swagger api where you can just go and try it out. So you can click on try it out and I don't have any parameters here, so I can just execute it and then get a response. Very cool, right? Um, so you can try everything here. So you can also get the curl request if you want. Uh, okay, now what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to reduce the size a little bit and create a new endpoint and this is also going to be a get request and i call it predict slash predict so slash predict you can also do slash predict slash something i will show you uh, on that part and here i'm going to change uh, the name to fetch predictions now we have our model here but we have not initialized our model so let's initialize the model is text model and uh, since i'm using these i can just do model dot load model dot bin and it loads my model and then i can also specify the device here if i want to but de by default it's cuda so uh, i will use gpu for this and then i have the fetch predict and maybe i will write another function called predict so i have the predict function and the predict function takes what it takes a string or maybe let's just write it here so i have the fetch predictions and fetch predictions should return me a um, positive and a negative label so positive will be zero let's say and negative is one minus zero so one minus prediction let's say and this is also prediction so now my fetch predictions should take us text which is a string we actually don't need the typing optional here i'm just going to remove that import you should not import stuff you don't need and uh we have text string here and now what we are going to do is we are going to take the text and put it in a list of values so if you look at the training code here we have the train data set so i'm just going to take this and i'm going to copy paste it here and instead of train data set it's just a data set which takes a list or an array and a list or an array of targets so here i don't have any targets i can just do a list with minus one that's my fake targets and here i can do text so in a list so now uh, since i'm using these i can just do pred is list so it returns uh, so like model.predict will return a generator so i just convert it to a list 
and uh, it predicts on a data set so data set model to predict data set um, and it should return me the predictions so let me see print red so let's say prediction is zero just so that this doesn't fail and if i i'll go here now and let me refresh it and see what what we have so we have a slash predict endpoint now um fetch predictions so let's try it out click on try it out and input some text or maybe input something like awesome and execute it so let's see what we get we don't get anything it's it is executing okay so we got a uh, positive and negative and we go to uh, here and we see we have a list of arrays numpy arrays so one more thing that we must do here if we are doing uh, we are predicting only for one sample so let's make batch size one this is going to be much faster and uh, let me save it again so since we used minus minus reload when we started uv icon it should reload automatically so let me show you again so uh, this is the command uv icon api app host port and minus minus reload so whenever you make any change in the code it will reload uh, the endpoint on its own so now you see it took quite a while to make the prediction last time so let's see how much time it takes now and it's much faster so um, this is your request URL so I'm just going to copy paste it and open it in a new tab and you see the raw data positive zero negative one and that's what we have so uh, what I'm going to do is um, since um, we since since we have a list of um, arrays so this is our first element and then second and then third this should give us uh, a prediction and if i convert all this to uh, float i should have a prediction value and i can remove this i can take this here put it here and that's my prediction so <laughs> uh, pretty simple in like three four lines of code you have your predict endpoint and now i'm going to save it and here it should restart automatically and it has and i'm going to refresh this and see what happens so i'm getting 3.22 and minus 2.22 something like that it doesn't make sense so we will do one more cool thing i will just add torch dot sigmoid here in this model and save it again and let's try again one more time and see what happens so now positive is 96 and negative is uh, 0 0.03. I will I will add one more thing here. Sentence and this is going to be text. The text that we input. So that you will also see the text that I'm inputting because you are not able to see the um, address bar. So this is an awesome video and uh it gives me 98 and and this is i don't like this video let's say let's try i don't like this video and it gives me a negative sentiment more than uh, 0 0.77 77 percent so um what i can do is i can also add another argument here or if i have to convert it to a post request i can do that and um, uh, using dot post so for for that i will show you like very quickly what you can do is you, know, you can use pydantic from pydantic import base model and you can create a model so like i will create new class um so this is your api model and it has like uh i will call it sentiment predict okay and it inherits from base model and here uh, I can input some things like text so text will be string 
and uh, maybe uh, threshold uh, now I can say okay uh, threshold can be an float sorry and now I'm going to use this as an input to the model so I will just say sp sentiment predict and here it will become sp.text and I will say if prediction greater than sp.threshold then um, sentiment equal to positive and I can just say here sentiment by default is negative and I can add and here I can add so just so you can see here I can add sentiment sorry not here sentiment and sentiment okay okay looking pretty cool now uh, so let's see text is not available so this should be sp.text and I will change my endpoint to post endpoint now post request so you have to send post request so let's go back to swagger and let's refresh it so now this is post slash predict and we try it out it takes a string and a threshold so let's say I set the threshold at 6 this is so cool I love it and I click on execute and it will give me the curl request and it gives me the response body so positive negative detected sentiment is positive and here is your sentence so now you can go and you can use it in production if you want so I can you can just you can in, increase the number of workers so minus minus workers to four let's say ah, to four and now you have four workers running so it can handle multiple requests in uh, simultaneously so yeah that's all for today's video uh, this is how you can create an API for any kind of machine learning or deep learning model very easily and this is the most basic version of it and you can do a lot of cool stuff I've not even shown you 1% of fast API but there's a lot to learn with fast API and I hope you will like it and uh, I hope you will like this video too so yeah if you do like it do click on the like button and do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and do tell your friends about it and thank you very much see you Bye.